Hi, welcome to YTV and this week's segment of Everybody Has a Story. In September, she was crowned the 2014 Miss America, making her the first ever Miss America of Indian descent. We are very excited to be joined by the smart, talented, and beautiful Nina Davaluri. Nina, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so a lot of people don't realize that Miss America is more than just the crown you're wearing, right? It's a, it's a year of service. Can you tell me what, what that has entailed over the past couple months? Absolutely. It really is um, a full-time job and everyone wants to win Miss America and not everyone wants the job of Miss America and those are two very separate things. Um, so the night I won, I was immediately whisked off to a press conference. I had about 20 minutes with my family and friends and then I was asked to repack my belongings into two suitcases and I've literally been living out of those two suitcases since in September. Um, and since then, one of there's a lot of incredible events that I get to do, but um, I'll touch on a few, particularly promoting my platform, which is celebrating diversity through cultural competency. Um, and that's just why I'm here at Yale today, speaking about that. And as well as I'm a National Goodwill Ambassador for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. So I travel across the country visiting various children hospitals um, across America. And I also promote STEM education, particularly women in science, technology, engineering, and math. So I work closely with the Department of Education doing that. So lots of fun things on the schedule. Now, obviously, the other big story, you know, you know first you were the first Indian American woman to, Miss Amer uh, to win Miss America. One of the other big stories was the backlash you faced, you know, the racial and xenophobic comments. Now, were you prepared for that sort of backlash? Had you experienced that in previous pageants? I had, sadly. Um, I experienced it when I won the title of Miss New York. And um, I knew that should I win Miss America, it would probably happen on a much larger scale, and it certainly did. The, the silver lining with everything that happened, though, is that for every one negative comment, tweet, or post, I truly received hundreds, if not thousands, words of positive encouragement and support from not only, not only Indians or Americans, but people really from all across the world. And to have that was truly amazing. Now, have you encountered any of that backlash on the road? Are, do, are these just people hiding behind their Twitter accounts, or do you encounter it on the road in person? I do, and it's it's really unfortunate. Um, I was speaking at a middle school, actually, or excuse me, I think it was a high school, um, and um, I'm a very perceptive person, and I've always been in tune with what's going on around me, and um, a, a young girl said, uh, Miss America should totally be American. Like, why, why is she even, why did she get win this title, or something like that. Um, and those remarks to this day still happen, and they're going to continue to happen throughout my year um, and past it, probably. And the best thing I can do is always continue to present myself in the best light, to talk about, um, address those issues, um, and really help the people understand that, um, you know, America has, has really is the melting pot of the, new, of the world, really coming from New York, especially representing a state like New York, um, to really spread that message across America is, is why I have this role. Now, you, you've spoken in the past about um, your struggle with bulimia, and we've seen, you know, eating disorders skyrocket over the past decade in young children. Do you think these beauty pageants in general are sending the right message about body image, or is there something they can improve on? I can only speak on behalf of the Miss America organization because it's the only system that I've been involved with ever. Um, and for me, I took about a five-year hiatus from the Miss America organization. I didn't start competing until I was healthy, until I was ready to be in a situation where I knew I could train in a healthy manner. And for me, that took years. I didn't start competing until I was 23. Um, and it's it really is a it's really about learning a healthy lifestyle for me. And and for me, when I was in college, which is when I really struggled with my body image and eating habits, was the fact that I was just so unbalanced. And throughout my entire journey to getting healthy and fitness, I've learned how to stay balanced, not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, socially, and spiritually as well. Do you think, would you want to enter your, your daughter into these? <laughs> Uh, pageants when people always ask me that uh, I can't even think beyond this year um, but it's it's funny because I started competing um, in the teen program when I was 16 and it was a great program for me to uh, participate in because I learned so many valuable skills you learn how to interview you learn how to walk into a room and network which are valuable skills especially in today's society um, that being said it's different for every person it's not for every girl um, and the reality of the situation is not everyone gets to become 
Miss New York or Miss America. Um, and essentially 14,000 young women across this country compete for my job every year. And so it's just really hard you know, you can learn a lot of great things from competing because it's really like sports. I mean, you learn a lot of things, um, but you have to be at the right age uh, to be able to understand that you're not going to win every time. Well, you talk about learning things. You're going off to medical school, I understand, it ne next year. What do you think is the most important lesson you've taken from being Miss America that, you know, you can apply to being a better doctor? To really be understanding of every single person that you meet. Um, and I think that's really been difficult in my role because not everyone gets what goes on behind the scenes. Um, you know, not everyone understands I've traveled, you know, every day. I've been on two flights. I have, you know, been through, I've came from one event right to the other. And so no one really understands your day-to-day -day life. But when you get to an event, um, to be genuine, to be personable, to um, touch every person um, in, a, in a, you know, in a heartfelt way is is what I'm doing this year and something that will definitely carry forward as I become a physician. Now I understand you met President Obama. I is, did. Is that right? Now he, he's someone who can you know both relate to the backlash but also being a role model uh, for young children. What What did he say to you? Did he give any advice? He was very genuine and very personable um, and what my opening line was kind of along the sense of he was actually a commencement speaker when I was at University of Michigan so we were able to talk about that. Um, he asked about the job of Miss America, what I'm doing, you know, I mentioned I'm traveling, you know, across the entire country 20,000 miles a month um, and he also said something that was very thoughtful. Um, he had actually had a meeting with Prime Minister Singh a couple weeks before I was at the White House um, and they had talked, spoken about me and it was in an article that I'd, I saw and um, he had 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 only positive things to say and it really felt like it was a heartfelt congratulations with winning this title. Well we always end our interviews with a speed round. Now, this is just oh, a round okay. of like fun you know oh, questions. These. Good. <laughs> yeah these are small quick questions Great. so quick answers. Um, so we'll start with the first one. Past Miss America you most admire? Kirsten Hagland. She was from Michigan 2008. Celebrity crush. Chris Pine from Star Trek. Hey, I love him. Relationship status. Taken. Everyone watching this broadcast just sucks, <laughs> including the guy behind the camera. Best part of being Miss America so far. Children, definitely. Um, being able to travel across and visit Children's Miracle Network hospitals is really amazing because most of these kids don't know who I am or frankly what I am, um, but all they think is a princess has walked into the room for the day. And to see that genuine you know, smile on these kids' faces is really amazing. Biggest stereotype about the pageant? Plastic surgery and boob jobs. <laughs> and I chose not to. Um, it's just a personal decision. I'm very against it. Um, I don't judge you for it, but I think that money can be spent in a lot better ways. One thing you would change about the pageant? If you I think the stigma. And many people don't realize that Miss America is a year of service. Um, you work with so many different organizations. Um, I won $91,000 in scholarship money to further my education. I've been able to graduate debt-free because of that money from you know an institution like Michigan. Um, and so it's really an incredible organization that you can learn a lot from. All right, for our last question, okay. now you are you know Miss America, beauty queen. Um, so we have a bit of a beauty controversy at our school. Okay. Our new president, Peter Salave, uh, once had a mustache a few years ago <laughs> when, when he was dean and, pro uh, and he became provost and then president and he shaved off, of, off his mustache. And there's been some controversy over which is better, mustache or no mustache. So I want to settle this debate right now. So we're going to show these to the camera. We've printed out both pictures of our Yale University president. Okay. What do you think? Well, I think he looks fabulous in both, but my personal pre preference, I guess, would be no mustache. No mustache. Okay. <laughs> president Salve, you heard Miss America 2014. Nina Defilary, thanks so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us, and special thanks to all of the organizations who helped bring Miss Devilery in. For YTV, I'm Cody Pomerantz. See you next time.